the state of PC game performance, maybe optimization, when these games are launching has been a major topic over the last several months. It seems like, especially now that we're getting games, that uh, if they're targeting consoles, are targeting just current gen only without thinking about backwards compatibility to older generations, the, uh, the hardware required and the performance we're getting has jumped up a lot, but there's still always questions about whether it's justified and whether or not, you know, if the game gets patched and after a few months performs a lot better, should the game have just been delayed on PC to actually work correctly, uh, you know, at the time they launch it. And now I'm seeing headlines like this, and we'll d d dive further into it, about City Skylines 2, where the developer admits performance issues, but will launch the game anyway. We have not achieved the benchmark we targeted. Let's launch it. So how bad is this? Well, first of all, they revised their system requirements. They had originally released a set of old requirements, and then they have now uh, released an updated version of those. Especially the recommended requirements have jumped up significantly um, from an i7-9700K CPU to an i5-12600K, uh, which has significantly more gaming performance, and also on the AMD side from a Ryzen 5 5600X, uh, to a 5800X, uh, that's jumping up from a 6-core 12 thread to an 8-core 16 thread from the same generation. Uh, they kept the 16 gigabyte RAM the same, but then the GPU jumped from a 2080 Ti to an RTX 3080, which is a sizable performance jump. Um, and then they just list like, okay, or AMD equivalent. Uh, the minimum requirements didn't jump quite as heavily, but they did also jump, uh, this, in this case, from a, GTA, a GTX 780 to a GTX 970, and the CPU is going from an i7-4790K to uh, i7-6700K, and then uh, AMD from a 1600X to a 2600X, so a, a generation newer. But what kind of performance will you actually get from this? And why are they choosing to release a game that they're claiming did not meet their performance targets? Well, you can actually find in the Paradox Forum that exact question in FAQ. Why are you releasing the game if you have performance issues? Seems like a reasonable question. <laughs> We've taken the long-term vision of the project into account and feel that a release now is the right step. Okay. City Skylines 2 presents uh, features, they probably mean and, gameplay that we're very proud of, and despite that, the game is performance heavy. Uh, we believe it will be an experience you'll truly appreciate. And will everyone experience performance issues? Well, it depends on your PC configuration, you know, some will experience issues, depends on the settings you use, all of that. Well, this game comes out on October 24th, and... Uh, but right now we do have reviews available, and I've been looking these up and searching like Control F performance. So like, how is performance going on these? Um, and so this is from PC Games Network, and if you jump to performance uh, mentioned here, they say the second problem is performance. Paradox has admitted already that the City Skylines 2 does not meet its own internal targets in this regard, and even on a quality rig that comfortably and capably runs the likes of Baldur's Gate 3, which, let's be honest, until you get to Act 3 the, where the CPU gets hit pretty hard, that game's not super difficult to run, but then comfortably runs Starfield, okay, that one actually is pretty demanding. And the recent COD Modern Warfare 3 beta, again, that's not super demanding. And guys, I tried to figure out what PC hardware this reviewer was actually using. And like, you can try to search for things like GPU or, uh, well, you could try spelling it correctly, GPU or CPU or, you know, graphics card or, they just don't show up. Uh, so this is a bit of a side note, but can PC reviewers um, please publish the system that you uh, played the game or reviewed the game on. Anyway, it would be useful. But anyway, um, they say despite it pl uh, being a system that did seem to play recent games comfortably, City Skylines 2 has considerable problems, saying loading times are inconsistent, zooming in and out of your city creates freezes and wait times, detail levels drop, running CS2 on the lowest preset solves many of the issues, but for a game where panoramic architectural and scenic splendor are supposed to reign, uh, Anyway, they, they just say that, say that it's not optimal in its current form. Anyway, what about some other reviews? So PC Gamer uh, is saying, um, <clears throat> as you'd guess, the bigger the city gets, the more severe performance issues become. 
When one of my cities reached a population of about 45,000, which isn't even close to as big as these cities can get, I decided to abandon it and start a new one because my frames dropped to a choppy 30 frames per second at best when zooming in close enough to build. Um, and they say their CPU, which they don't specifically list, is somewhere between the minimum and recommended specs in that system requirements list. But the GPU is an RTX 4070 Ti, which is, you know, brand new $800 graphics card and is above the recommended RTX 3080. Uh, but then I also found review from uh, Rock Paper Shotgun, where they did thankfully post their actual system that they're reviewing on, which is extremely modest. A Ryzen 5 3400G and a Radeon RX 590. That is not a crazy system. That's actually fairly old and outdated by this point for modern AAA games, especially these big ones that are seeming to have issues. However, when I searched this article for performance, they say, I haven't had the performance issues everyone's been fretting about for what it's worth. It ran, abso ran absolutely fine on medium with my usual anti-blur options until I put everything up to high again for screenshots. And it became both uglier and much slower. So um, maybe we're in a situation here where the lowest settings actually run fine. And it's just, if you go past that, things are terrible. So do we have any harder numbers? Um, I was able to find a German outlet, so this is Google translated into English. Uh, PCGamesHardware.de has actually benchmarked the game. Now, it looks like their benchmark run here, and I, by the way, I'll link all my sources in the video description. Uh, for example, this is running the game, and if you look at the, the graphics menu, well, I can't read all of these settings myself, it does look like they're running at 720p to create a CPU limited situation. And uh, you can see here that they're using a Ryzen 7 7800X3D, which is uh, as recent reviews of the i5, uh, sorry, i, i9 4900K CPU that Intel just released have shown that the 7800X3D is usually actually faster than that in gaming. So in other words, this is still at least tied for or usually uh, the, the fastest gaming CPU on the planet paired with an RTX 4090 to not get a, a um, GPU limit at, again, 720p. These are the settings um, that I'm assuming is high, but I don't actually know. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look, uh, what they basically do is they do a, just a little fly through of the city and run a benchmark run of doing that. Now the footage, it's hard to judge in a YouTube video because you're seeing variable refresh rate performance in a locked 60 FPS but it does seem to stutter a bit at times. And there's a lot of flickering in the footage that looks quite bad, to be honest. Um, like I just saw a stutter there, but again, it's, it's unclear how much that would appear on your actual screen. But when they then finish that benchmark run, you see that they're getting an average of 59.3 FPS. And again, that is on the absolute highest end gaming system that you can pretty much get at this point. Um, so that is pretty brutal. And then they published a lot of other results in text format here, uh, which we're seeing here. So at 1080p resolution, it's very likely that you can end up CPU limited, especially in a game like this. And the CPU that they were testing here um, is the game's, um, I think it was the 5600 X, I believe, yes. Uh, so this is a 5600X CPU. So definitely a decent and recent mid-range gaming CPU. And was, again, if we look at the system requirements, it was the recommended CPU before um, they updated the system requirements. Now, if we go ahead and hop back into the charts on this, um, what we're seeing here is that at the very low preset, the RTX 4090 and 7900 XT and RTX 3080, these are all achieving basically the same frame rate. So what we're seeing is a CPU limited situation. So basically this is showing that the, um, the Ryzen 5 5600X is capable of just shy of 80 frames per second average on this particular benchmark run that they did. But again, how big is your city getting, right? Uh, that's a, definitely a big question mark. And then when they turn the graphics settings up to high, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> so first of all, we're now seeing actual scaling from the uh, RTX 
3080 down to the, uh, up to the RTX 4090. So like if you set the 3080 as a baseline, the 4090 is 56% faster, which means that we're not CPU limited here. This is GPU limited performance. And um, in GPU limited performance, their recommended GPU, the RTX 3080, is only hitting 24.4 frames per second on average. And again, that's currently their recommended GPU from the game, uh, for the game. And that is at 1080p resolution. Granted, it's at the high settings. So perhaps in our you know, rock, paper, shotgun reviewer who was doing this on a, a low-end PC, if they were sticking to, I mean, they said medium and we don't see medium tested here by this outlet. It looks like at least going up to the high settings basically makes the game almost unplayable. They're seeing the RTX 4090 hitting 38 frames per second on average at 1080p high settings, 1080p. And the 1% lows are definitely drip, uh, dropping below that. They're, they're down at 24. You can see the scaling in between here as well with cards like the 6700 XT, which is generally a solid, you know, 1440p medium settings GPU, sometimes higher, or 1080p, you can usually max things out uh, without ray tracing. We're seeing under 20 frames per second on the RX 6700 XT. Um, that seems absolutely crazy. But what if you go up to 1440p resolution? <laughs> Um, so jumping up to 1440p, we're now seeing that at the very low preset, you're still mostly CPU bound, although there's starting to be a little bit of separation between the 3080 and the 4090, most likely pointing to, um, you know, you're not always CPU bound or always GPU bound. There, there's generally a balance. Uh, you know, in some scenes, it's one, in some scenes, it's the other. And so if there's a small gap between the two, it's likely that you're usually CPU limited, but occasionally the faster GPU can get you a few extra FPS in certain scenes, but that still mostly looks like a CPU limited situation. Uh, but then again, at the high settings at 1440p, it looks like the RTX 4090 is under 30 FPS. So the RTX 4090 does not appear to be capable of 30 FPS consistently at high settings in this game, which seems absolutely nuts. Um, and then the 3080 is dropping down into the teens. We're seeing 16 frames per second. And again, if you're gonna to try to say that this is a CPU limited situation, that doesn't make sense because these are running on the same CPU and the 3080 up to the 4090 is scaling 77% uh, performance Im improvement, showing that it was at least mostly, if not all, all completely a GPU limited situation and it's just insanely demanding. Now, all of that being said, this is not the, um, this is not the, the full release build of the game, although they did say uh, in the text of the article that this was a updated branch that was a little more updated, I think, compared to what some people uh, were reviewing on. But anyway, uh, this actually shows that there is literally no gaming system on the planet that is capable of a steady 30 frames per second at 1440p high in this game. Now, it does look like going down to the low settings does get you a playable experience. And it also seems like the type of game where a uh, high frame rate is not necessarily uh, ne necessarily necessary to enjoy it. But do note that PC games hardware also has um, frame time graphs and one's from an AMD GPU and one's from uh, uh, Nvidia GPU. We're seeing the 7900 XD and the 3080 where they talk about these massive frame time spikes that they experience uh, while playing the game. Uh, some, of, some of them uh, all the way up to like a half a second spike, and they say it doesn't always even uh, just require you to be moving around. Um, it can just happen randomly. So they say they don't know exactly what's happening. They say they can only speculate, but since the stuttering also occurs when the camera is static, there seems to be some kind of synchronization that occurs at certain intervals. Um, but it looks like there's no real way to get around that, and it's just going to happen. Anyway, uh, I will definitely link all these sources in the video description, and there's a lot more you can get out of taking a look at these. Uh, but overall, uh, while well, this video is mostly about City Skylines 2, and let me know if you guys want me to try to benchmark this when the game comes out. I think my problem with that, though, is I don't know if I have time to get to a big city build where the performance will be the most demanding in time to get... Uh, you know, a video out with a lot of performance testing, if that makes sense, because I don't have ac review access to the code. 
Uh, but anyway, I'm, uh, while I'm hopeful that the actual launch build will perform better than this, again, it seems like the developers are talking about we will continually improve the game over the coming months. Um, so in other words, it, guys, do you feel like, this is kind of the bigger picture of the video beyond City Skylines 2, do you feel like a lot of games on PC lately are being basically released as an early access state, um, where then the game is actually in its final form several months later, and if the game had launched in that state rather than the basically early access state, they would receive a lot better um, word of mouth as well as possibly actual reviews. And I, I think that that's unfortunate. And what's weird with City Skylines 2 is like, um, this seems like a PC first game. Where we're seeing this in a lot of games is more console exclusive, uh, well, not console exclusive, but console first games that then you, they just kind of force out the PC game at the same time or something like that. Uh, whereas this one feels more like a PC first game and it's actually the console versions that got delayed, but yet we're still seeing this trend. And I don't know whether it's the developers choosing to do this or they're being pressured by the publisher or some combination of the two. But um, I don't know guys, this feels really rough. And again, this is coming on the heels of like, I just went over the Alan Wake 2 PC system requirements in my previous video, uh, where it looks like that's gonna be brutally demanding, but at least in that game, the graphics do look it look very impressive. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest, guys, like, this looks kind of shimmery and not that impressive to me, but again, there's a lot going on here and there's simulation running in the background and everything like that, but... Um, Anyway, uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, is this a game I should try to take a look at if I get the chance uh, from a benchmarking perspective? How much interest is there? And in general, how do you feel about the optimization of PC games recently? Personally, like I get if you're pushing graphical boundaries, that's one thing, but also at the same time, I think that some thought should be given to the scalability of the game. Uh, and at least it is does seem to be true that on the lower graphic settings, if we look at that here, it does look like at the lower graphic settings, um, the GPUs are at least doing okay, and a Ryzen 5 5600X hitting around 80 FPS doesn't seem terrible. And again, um, I don't know what to make of the Rock Paper Shotgun uh, review completely, but they seem to be on extremely modest hardware and actually pretty happy with the performance of the game. Uh, what exactly that means, everybody has different standards, I don't know. Um, but maybe if you, again, stick to, the, um, stick to the lower settings, maybe it'll be fine. Because my personal opinion is I have no problem with a game absolutely crushing an RTX 4090 on its maximum settings if it seems visually justified, as long as the game is also scalable and it's and you can play it and have it still look reasonable and perform reasonably well on reasonable hardware. So that's what I'm looking for in games. Um, what are you guys feeling lately <laughs> about the state of PC game releases? I think this is, has a lot to do with the fact that we're seeing the next console generation uh, at this time, and that's just gonna make a big jump. Um, how do you guys feel about all of it? Let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.